Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Some way Christmas slips up on us every year as though we didn't have the faintest idea when it happens. And we get caught totally by surprise almost every year. Now Christmas is over and the big rush is on to take back to the stores the pile of gifts that you don't want, don't fit, or else you don't need. Today we breathe a sigh of relief and whisper, Thank God it's over for another year. And then feel guilt because we feel that way. But we do and we can't help it. In a lot of cases, Christmas decorations will come down this weekend as we try to shake off the weariness from the holidays and get back to the business of living. But at times I get a cold feeling that when the decorations are put away, we're pushing this whole business of Christ coming aside for another year almost as though Bethlehem doesn't fit into the business of life in the 21st century. Is Christmas only a holiday, a blowout with all the trimmings, or is it the thoughtful remembrance of Him who brings lasting hope for all mankind every day of every year? If there is no God who has revealed Himself in the flesh via Bethlehem, where do you turn to for hope? Washington, Beijing, Moscow, Geneva, Tel Aviv, or Cairo? Ruling out the option that there is a God who controls the fate of mankind, we are faced with a grim pessimism of world powers which have no solution to lasting peace, super weapons that could annihilate humanity as we know it several times over, power struggles for oil, food, and basic commodities that send us greedily snatching anything we can grab. In 1953, a country singer by the name of Hank Williams was riding the crest of popularity. Millions sang his country songs and voiced his praise. One evening, Williams was on his way to a stage appearance when he slumped over in the seat of an automobile. An ambulance rushed him to the hospital where he was pronounced DOA, dead on arrival. An analysis of his blood revealed an explosive combination of drugs and alcohol. That night, Williams was to give a concert of his country songs that had made him famous. The general public hadn't heard that their idol was dead and filled the theater where he was to appear. It was the grim responsibility of the manager to walk out on stage and tell the people that Williams was dead. As he turned and walked away, a single spotlight fell on an empty stage as the band played his then-famous song, I Saw the Light. Only days before, Williams and Rosemary Clooney had been on their way to another performance when Rosemary said, Hank, let's sing. And sing they did. Then someone said, Hank, let's sing your song, meaning, I saw the light. Williams sang a few lines, then stopped. And putting his head in his hands, gently sobbed, Oh, Rosemary, there ain't no light, there ain't no light. Was Williams right? Is Christmas only a myth, a religious celebration with no factual basis in history? Or did the coming of Jesus Christ bring into the world hope for all mankind? John wrote, The Word became flesh and lived among us for a little while. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only begotten Son of God. In a world of pessimism and gloom, there is still a shining light that endures when the tinsel is faded and the dust begins to settle on the decorations, and the world goes back to its normal routine. That light is the light of men, Jesus Christ, who still offers hope in a hopeless world. What better hope is there? You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.